Hello and welcome to this intro to Photoshop video where we will be looking at different ways to size an image to specific dimensions, check the color mode and the units of measure and resolution. So we can open an image by going to open or file open and navigate to the image location or you can just drag and drop the image into the open Photoshop interface. You can see it's created a new tab. To open multiple images, you can drag and drop an image into this empty gray space next to that tab. If you were to drag and drop the image onto the existing main interface image, it'll create a new layer. So make sure you're dragging it into this space for it to open in a new tab. First, let's check the document color mode by going to image mode and you can see we're in RGB mode. It's fine to work in RGB for both digital and print media. When you are ready to save for print, then you can change it to CMYK for those color separations and closer accuracy. Let's check the image size by going to image, image size, and we can see those dimensions here and the units are in inches at print resolution, which is 300. One of the easiest ways to change the units of measure that you're working in is with your rulers turned on by going to view rulers or command R will toggle your rulers. Right click on a ruler and you can see we're in inches. If you were working for web, you might want to change it to pixels. And let's say we need to change this image size to a four by six. First, let's do a save as file, save as to save our Photoshop file that will maintain the layers. And it's always good to create a copy of the image. You can see we're starting with a locked background layer. Let's drag that onto the plus sign. And I am in the Essentials workspace. And what I like to do is minimize these panels by up here in the top right, there's a double arrow to collapse the icons and make sure your layers are easy to access. The next thing I wanna do is convert this to a smart object by right clicking on the layer convert to smart object. That way when we do any cropping, it's gonna maintain our original, the complete image and all of those pixels at the original size. So one way we can crop this image is to go to image canvas size. And here we can change the width and height and you can choose from which direction the image will be cropped. So in the center, it's gonna equally crop top, bottom, left and right. If we choose the top left anchor, it's gonna crop off the right and bottom of the image. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it to that corner just so you can see. It's gonna tell us here that we are cropping the image and it's gonna remove those parts of the image on the locked background layer. I'm gonna go ahead and proceed. So we do have the full image on the smart object layer. We can hide this layer by turning off the eye visibility and we can unlock this background layer by double clicking and click OK. And you can see with the move tool, when I got to move this layer, it has cropped the image and we're completely missing the rest of the image. You can tell by the background, this checker pattern that there's transparency and we're missing the rest of the image. So I'm going to do command Z or edit undo until I get back to the uncropped image. So as long as we have a smart object of the image, we're okay. That's why it's good to make a copy. Another way to crop the image is by using the crop tool, C for shortcut. And here we can specify a preset ratio or we can type in our own values. Let's go with four by six or two by three. And now whether we take a corner or edge, it's gonna allow us to resize maintaining that ratio. And you can see as we scale up here at the top, it's showing us the width and height. So even though we're at a four by six ratio, the image itself is larger than four by six. I'm going to go ahead and apply this crop by either the check mark or hitting enter or return on the keyboard. And if we go to image, image size, we can see that we're not at four by six yet. We're just at that ratio. So let's change the height to six and it, it may not give you an exact value on width, but when you go to save, it will be fine. So go ahead and click OK. And since this layer is a smart object, we can just move or we can scale the image. To fit your image to the screen, do Command or Control Zero. And you can use your zoom tool with Z on the keyboard to zoom in and out, or your space bar, which is this hand icon, to pan around the image. Let's say we want to scale this smart object. We can do that by going to Transform, which is either Command T or Edit, Free Transform. 
And our handles are outside of our interface. So again, you can zoom in or out or command zero to give you some extra space for scaling. And you wanna hold down shift as you're scaling a corner. If you scale one of the edges while holding shift, it's still gonna warp the image. So go ahead and scale the image until you're happy with that composition and hit return or the check mark. And now let's say this is a JPEG file. And this time we're gonna select save a copy. For format, let's choose JPEG and let's give this file name a hyphen four by six and be sure to include your first initial last name. And that's gonna ask us what quality we want this JPEG. So for print or higher quality, we're gonna want large file, which is 11 or 12. And any of these format options is fine. Go ahead and click okay. Let's say we wanna make this a six by four, which would be landscape orientation. Go back to the crop tool and you can reverse that ratio or if I get out of that undo, we can go to image canvas size and type in the values there. Again, if we're cropping from canvas, it's gonna crop this image. So I would suggest using the crop tool. And if you look up here, the very top, it says delete cropped pixels. If we wanna avoid cropping this locked background layer, we can uncheck that to keep the full image. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that unchecked to maintain full quality and flexibility of the image. You can go ahead and hit return or go ahead and scale your view area. Enter and you can continue to click and move that smart object. So let's save this as a JPEG. File, save a copy. Select JPEG. And this time we're gonna name it six by four. So when you're naming with the dimensions, the first value is the width and the second value is the height. So I can tell that this is a landscape versus the four by six is a portrait view. And you can see if we go ahead and save the Photoshop file and maximize compatibility, it's gonna maintain these layers. Whereas if I open one of these JPEGs, you'll see we only have the locked background layer. So when we go to look at the file sizes, you can see our JPEGs are this size, 2.3, 1.8, versus the Photoshop file is 41.9 megabytes. Your working Photoshop file can vary drastically depending on what the original size was of your image when you converted it to a smart object. So let's double click on this smart object layer, which will open it in a new tab. And if we check the image size, you can see the original dimensions here. If this was double the size, you can do math in the value area. So times two tab, this was double the size and resampling to maintain 300 resolution and click okay. If I save that smart object layer, go back to the working Photoshop file, you can see it's updated the scale based on that much larger image. I'm gonna go ahead and save this just so you can see the file size. So our new file size, since that original image is so much larger, it's increased it now to 127.7 megabytes. So you wanna to try to optimize your file size based on your finished size. So you don't want a huge image living as a smart object layer if you do have the ability to resize that without losing the quality. So if I were cropping in to a zoomed in part of the image, I do want higher quality because we start with a set value of whatever that image size is. And the more we increase that size, if it's larger than the original, it's gonna start getting pixelated or blurry because we don't have the detail for a scaled size larger than the original. Let's go ahead and undo the resize and save, Command S. We can close that layer and it's updated again back to what it was before the resize. Go ahead and save, Command S. And now our file size is back to this 41.9. So it's always good to save a working Photoshop file with those layers should you need to make any edits in the future, but you also wanna do that in an optimized way for file size. Another way to set up your document to a specific size is to go to File, New, and we've got some presets here for print and web. Let's select print, let's do our original four by six, 300 resolution and RGB is fine for now. Now we're gonna navigate to the file and drag and drop it. In Photoshop, you don't have to worry about linking your image like you do in Illustrator. When you drop an image in, it's going to embed that information into the file. So you can see when I've dropped the image, it will choose either the max width or height depending on the original image ratio. And now holding down 
option and shift, I can scale from the center or holding down shift and grabbing a corner, you can scale based on its opposite anchor point. And I'm gonna compose this image and zoom in or out or pan spacebar if you need to. Plus and minus with the command or control key will allow you to zoom in and out. So once we're happy with this image, we can save as a JPEG. Or I do want to note, when I turn off this background layer, this checker pattern means that there is transparency. So if I go to save this image right now, save a copy, format JPEG, it will save the image with white wherever that image is missing. Unless we were to save it as a transparent PNG, I go into File, Save a Copy, and let's change the format to PNG. Large file size is fine. And you can see it didn't save white as the background. If I open that, it's still maintaining the transparency. So for our print image, we do want to make sure that our image is filling the entire canvas size when we go to save. And if we should need to change the canvas size again, you could always go back to the crop tool and transform, command T. As long as you have that image as the smart object, or you can go back to image canvas size to change the values there. So you can see, since I just free transformed the crop, it's larger than four by six. So to save as four by six, we would need to go back to image image size and change the width there. So if you have any doubt on your image size, just go to image image size, and you'll see what the finish size is here. You can also see the image size here in the lower left. If I were to change the image size, you'll see that those values just updated. I hope this video helps you better understand how to set up a document for a specific size or dimensions, change the color mode, determine your units of measure, and try to maintain the wholeness, quality, and flexibility of the image as you're working.